Shaman. What's, what's, what's going on, YouTube? Washington. This is what, 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 Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is your boy Jamar Artie Four here once again, and I'm gonna give you guys a really d d short review of this BET Awards that we just watched. Mainly because there's not much that I really want to elaborate on, but and I'm tired. Shit, it's what almost midnight, and I gotta get up for work in the morning. So, but I'm still gonna give you guys a video. So. We're going to try to run through this as quickly, but still effectively as we can, or at least for the things that I actually want to discuss. So Pharrell opens up the show. I wasn't too much sure what the shit, what the uh, song was that he was performing initially, but the shit got turned the fuck up when my bitch Missy Elliott came out with Pass That Dutch. It is so good to see Missy Elliott again. I can't wait for her to come out with some more new music. She still looks good, and I want her to come and show these other hoes how to get crunk, how to get, how to throw a rap hook, how to just do, just put out hip hop music that's just timeless. Like these other girls, they're cute for right now, but they just can't hold a candle to Missy in my eyes. Chris Rock and his hosting ability. Chris Rock's this show, we was in the first 15 minutes of the show and he is already throwing all types of shade and jabs and all this other shit. He had already brought up the, uh, the elevator shit with the Solange and Jay-Z. Uh, it, and he was just throwing like all sorts of just jams at everybody and like uh, the whole thing about he said Scandal uh, a lot of people the white people turn into, tune into Scandal on Thursday nights at 10 o'clock because there's a white president I'm like okay a lot of his jokes just made me uncomfortable they, they were funny because they were bad but the one that well, not, I, I could say this one was funny, but this one was so bad that it was funny. He was like, uh, you know, everybody's making, trying to make headphones. 50 Cent made headphones, and now it said Rick Ross has headphones, but they're called Diabetes. I'm like, that's so bad that it's funny. And it is kind of bad because I don't think it's good to make fun of diseases like diabetes. And Chris Rock was just making a whole lot of jokes that were just... No. Kiki Palmer's dress was making her look like she was part of the X-Men. Wayne was going through his performance doing a song, I have no idea what the fuck it was, looking like a homeless bum. And then Jaheen, Aiko, Jahina, Jaquanetta, whatever the girl name is that sings the worst song, <coughs> her live vocals are not the T, in my opinion. It sounds, you really didn't even, she was, it's not like almost like she was trying to put too much into it and she was straightening herself somehow, even though that song is really easy to sing, at least in my opinion. But was I the only one who kind of like jumped a little bit when John Legend started singing? I was like, ooh, ooh, that was, <laughs> John Legend kind of brought, brought that song to life. I was like, ooh, yes, God, John, yes, God, baby. That's the book I'm talking about. John Legend brought that song home, but Jaheen wasn't about to have it. She tried. She got that last little run in at the end. She had that little uh, uh, rift. She was like, "I'm gonna get. I'm gonna have the last say with this shit. You ain't gonna come here, slay me on my own shit, and me not at least get the last uh, vocal in. God damn it!" Chris Brown did a performance to his uh, song "Loyal." Chris, I still, in my opinion, I think he looks good. You know, with his little thickums new body. Uh, but it was really nice to see him on stage. He didn't perform and do as much movement as he used to. I don't know if it's because he's not, you know, in shape like he used to be or if he didn't have the kind of time to practice. But either way it goes, the performance was still dope. Chris Rock going to the goddamn monster truck rally, going around to all the different white people, asking them, like, make sure y'all attend, go to the BET Awards, asking them, like, who, uh... Asking some random white guy, like, who's who, what rapper do you think is gonna win this year? The guy was like, uh, uh, Eminem. I'm like, you know what? The only reason he thought of Eminem was because he's white. And he was trying to ask people, uh, trying to finish the Drake lyrics. It started from the bottom, and they kept saying, ended at the top. Until the one dude was finally like, uh, <laughs> the one dude actually ended up saying, and now we're here. The big the larger fellow that was at the end, and he, he asked him, like, did you ever try to date a white woman, or uh, a black woman? He was like, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> that 
last guy, he was funny. Usher comes onto the stage looking like an initially looking like an Eskimo, but he started getting into all his old classics like you know, uh, you don't have to call, uh, yeah, confessions. Like his discography is just fucking legendary. And then he went into uh, his new song called "Good Kisser." I hadn't really gotten to hear the studio version. I've heard like uh, I've seen people play it in like the background during choreography videos on YouTube, and then I saw this live version, which still wasn't the greatest depiction. So I'm gonna have to try to listen to it for real, for real. But honestly, the performance was hot. There was like uh, she had a background dancer that I mean, he had a background dancer at one point that looked like Zero Suit Samus from Super Smash Brothers, and one random chick I don't know where she came from with them snow boots was up, pussy popping in the camera with her weave over her face. We couldn't even see her face, and she was just getting it. And I don't even know if she's supposed to be there or not, because then when Usher was up in the front doing choreography with the rest of the people, she was still back there grinding and shit. I'm like, is she supposed to still be on stage? I was I was confused. Jennifer Hudson came out performing some of her new music. Now, mind you, Jennifer's body is everything, okay? Jennifer's body is everything. Her cut, her look, her image is cute, but her music... It's not necessarily bad, but it's not really memorable either. Not like compared to some of the stuff she had when she first started out. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it's because it's not promoted as much, but it's just not sticking. So I'm hoping the best for her. I'm still a big uh, big fan ever since I've seen her in Dreamgirls. I've been a big fan of hers. So I hope she gets it together. Nicki Minaj in this performance, where she started off on the back of a bicycle uh, doing the uh, verses to Chi Rock, Chi Rock, however you pronounce it, and then it went into Pills and Potions, and she had that one dude, he was cute, whoever he was, the singing the, uh, the first part of the uh, Pills and Potions chorus, but her whole set uh, looked like somebody who was strung out on, ex on an ecstasy pill. It was mushrooms, bunnies, ballerinas, and shit everywhere. I'm like, girl, what am I supposed to get from this imagery? I mean, I guess the... I mean, are you trying to allude to using drugs and shit? I mean, well, she did say overdosing, so... But it just it just was a trippy set with a whole bunch of random shit going on. <laughs> but I'm just like, oh, okay, girl, you know, this is what you want to do. That's all good for me. So August Alcina was doing his performance. Y'all know I don't too much give a fuck about August or nothing that he does because he's an asshole and his whole person just annoys me. But uh, apparently him and Trey Songz had a lot of uh, makeup sex and they were doing a song, their remix of I Love It. And then Chris Brown came out of fucking nowhere. So you had three, even though August Alcina is a bitch nigga, bitch made nigga, I don't really too much care for him. Physically, he's very attractive. So you had Chris Brown, August, and Trey Songz on stage. And I'm just like, ooh, girl. This is just making all everybody get all, all the thoughts out there just getting excited from the sight. That <laughs> now, had they all been halfway naked, it would have been a fucking wreck. But, you know, we can't, we can't get all that at once. It's going to be too much. It'd just be too much. But, uh, I mean, the song was cute. Now, Trey Songz went into uh, his... Uh, Old Na Na song. His album, I think, comes out next week. I streamed part of it, and I didn't too much care for it. I think there's a uh, there's one song on there that did actually sound like it was worth uh, a listen, and a, uh, it was it was like the latest Buzz single he did. What what you can change about me, or what's best about me, or something like excuse me, something like that. I can't really call it right now, but that was the only song. And it's just like ever since Ready. Anything that's come after Ready, that passion play, passion, pleasure, pussy, whatever, the, the, the three P's, P squared uh, shit came out. That was forgot forgettable. It had Can't Be Friends and Bottoms Up, and but those didn't really go too much of anywhere. Then you had Chapter 5, which really people just kind of forgot about. Uh, and now we have this trigger that he's not really promoting. So... <laughs> I don't know what Trey Song's camp is is doing, uh, but you know it, it is what it is. The next part of it was this Lionel Lionel Richie tribute, and I give a shout out to Lionel Richie because he is also a Tuskegee Golden Tiger. He's a Tuskegee alumni like myself, so shout out to my Tuskegee viewers. 
or anybody who just may watch this who knows about Tuskegee. Uh, John Legend came out and did Hello. Legacy came out and did uh, Brick House. Legacy always uh, comes in for the tributes. That girl can sing, bitch. Uh, but then we got Yolanda Adams, who did Jesus is Love. Yolanda brought us to C-H. You are C-H. She brought us to church. You hear me? Alana was up there giving me everything that I needed and more, okay? Woo! Yes, God, Yolanda. You did that, girl. You did that. And then Lionel came in and did my song, Easy Like Sunday Morning. Easy Like Sunday Morning. Love that song. I'm, I'm, uh, it makes me think about my old life when I was back at home in Michigan. And my mommy was a real big Lionel Richie fan, and she used to play that song uh, a lot of times when we would be waking up. It, it just brought back a lot of memories and just, oh my God, I love that song. <laughs> and he did um, All Night Long. All Night Long sounds like a mix of R&B, reggae, and uh, Latin music all in one. It's just an amazing record. <laughs> I'm just sitting there just grooving. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. I was I was groovy, y'all. I really was. Then T.I. go out, come out here and do this uh, mediocre song with uh, I.G.G.Y. Uh, Iggy Azalea. And I don't too much care about that part because I didn't know the song. Then Iggy went into Fancy. Now, Fancy is a dope song. I, it's uh, really, really cute. Uh... And it went actually number it went number one really really fast. And a lot of people think that Iggy just kind of started coming out and just was here just like a few months ago. When really Iggy has been here for like three four years. Uh, I've been hearing her name many a time. It just hasn't really stuck up until now. But she's been in the game long time, at least three four years. So she's not really new. She's just new to most people because a lot of people are finding out about her. <laughs> uh, but it was cute. I always, I think Iggy is a really, really pretty girl. Um, and I'm glad that Nicki Minaj actually has some competition for the, even though she did win the female rap award, it's still nice to have somebody else at least give her a uh, run for her money. Young Money won some award. And here, and Lil Wayne gone get up on the motherfucking, uh, I'm going to get up on the stage talking about some Young Moolah, baby. And knocks the mic over and breaks the shit. I'm like, what kind of ignorant ass shit? What was that supposed to prove? Like, dude, you broke. They probably going to bill his ass for that shit later. Silk came out and did Freak Me, Baby. Baby, baby. Because tonight, baby, I want to get freaky with you. Yes, the 90s music used to be having people getting, ooh, nasty. When I think back on some of the uh, baby making music of the 90s, that don't, man, that shit's on the stuff that we do today. Because they, it just used to build the more the atmosphere better. It, it didn't have to be so direct and nasty like it is today. It's like they used to, I don't even know, I can't even explain it, but that shit just brought back. Memories <laughs> when I was, you know, a young little thing going on and doing stuff. <laughs> that sounded so bad. So this is the part of the night that seems to be the most talked about, uh, at least on Twitter after the show was over, is Nikki and her ex acceptance speech of of hip hop, best hip hop female hip hop award artist or whatever that shit's called. And at first, during the, uh, uh, what you call it, I was thinking Iggy might actually take this because she's new on the scene. She's growing a lot of popularity recently, and she just got a number one record on the Hot 100s, and Nicki has been out this whole time and has not gotten a number one song on the Hot 100s. So I'm thinking there's actually a possibility that she might actually win this because Nicki's been on a roll for the past four years. And, but lo and behold, they gave it to Nikki again. And Nikki was on track for this speech. She was good. 
But then she went <laughs> a little left when she said, you know what? <clears throat> Whenever you hear Nicki Minaj spit, you know that it was written by Nicki Minaj. Now, there's some things. They, I took that. And a lot of other people took that as shade to Iggy, saying that I don't I don't even know if Iggy writes her own stuff. But it seemed like it was shade to Iggy just because that's who she's been kind of going back and forth with a little bit via social media and whatnot. And I'm just like, if that's the case, bitch. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I, well, I don't really have a preference between the two. I mean, I guess I can say I've known Nikki longer, but Iggy, there's nothing really wrong with Iggy. Iggy has a cute little album. There's a lot of bangers on that shit, so... <laughs> it was just funny to see that shade, though. I was like, ooh, girl, now you know you about to get dragged. And then the uh, the show closes with the, this special performance between Beyonce and Jay-Z. And honestly, I'm really getting tired of these whole Beyonce-related performances via satellite, via her tours. Because, I mean, at first it was like, oh, okay, well, this is, I guess, kind of cute. At least we get to see her do a show or whatever. But at this point, it's just kind of like, why even say they're going to be performing when they're just showing tour footage? Like, I mean, I guess in one way, it's a way for BET to promote their show and put them for last so that they could bring their viewership up. And also, it's a way for Beyonce to further promote the tour. But I just don't like the... Uh, it seems so impersonal uh, having to perform via satellite. It's not even like they're, she's performing to our crowd. She's performing to the crowd that's you know at her show. And... And even though the performance was great by any chance, you know, it had an extra, she did partition, there was an extra verse by Jay-Z, but it, I don't know if it's because I guess partition is slower, so she couldn't really give like the normal energized, you know, boom, 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 you know, hair doing all of this type of Beyonce that we're used to, and it just ended the night, it was just kind of slow, and it just kind of ended, and it was, that was it. It was like, it wasn't as in your face like I think I was expecting. I don't know. But either way it goes, that was the BET Awards for 2014, y'all. This was better. This was probably like one of the best BET Awards in a while. Uh, last year's, the only thing that was really good about last year's uh, award show was uh, the Charlie Wilson thing. Aside from that, the rest of that show, well, Charlie Wilson I'll get, and, and Sierra had a good performance. But other than that, wasn't shit else about that show. At least this one had, you know, a lot of decent, you know, it it wasn't as bad. But thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in my next video. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. Like, share, subscribe. Washington, Washington, Washington.